Welcome to the Cyber Scotland podcast. My name is Declan Doyle and I'm the Head of Professional Services at the Cyber and Fraud Centre. Today, I'm joined by Adam, Connor, Heidi and Stephen, who are members of our ethical hacking team. And we're going to be chatting about getting into a career in ethical hacking and cyber security. I'll also be asking them their advice to businesses based on their hands-on experience dealing with SMEs and charities in Scotland. So first of guys, welcome. How are we doing? Doing good. Doing good. And not to rant, thanks. Thank so uh, I think you'll all know this question we get asked all the time as ethical hackers, but what is ethical hacking, Adam? Why don't you start us off? Ethical hacking is, um, I want to say it's pen testing for keeping businesses safe and making sure businesses are safe in a more attacker approach than on a defensive side. So keeping businesses safe, yeah. Yeah. So Heidi, when did you first hear about ethical hacking? I think I heard when I was in fifth year, so in high school, uh, I was looking at universities because I knew I wanted to do something computing related, but I wasn't exactly sure because like, the computing field is so varied. I didn't know exactly what to do. So I was looking at Aberte because Aberte was the, my first choice for computing. And I was looking at the courses. Uh, the ones that stood out was cybersecurity and ethical hacking. And I think just the modules in ethical hacking interested me a lot more because they had the pen testing modules. So I think I definitely, I chose ethical hacking because of that, because of the testing. And just everything that I've heard from ethical hacking, it just interested me quite a lot. And things that my teacher have told me as well, because they're obviously there to guide you. And just the way he spoke about it, I was like, yeah, that's that's, that's for me. It's, it's a very interesting field, yes. It's yeah. very exciting to hear about. Connor, when did you first hear about it? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I was back while I was still in a, living in America. Um, I was in high school. I was sort of into programming. I wasn't like the biggest fan of computer science and programming, but... I think I had just watched uh, the TV show Mr. Robot, actually, uh, and uh, I found it a very interesting concept for a TV show and um, sort of piqued my interest and then I sort of went down a rabbit hole and started looking at, you know, uh, you know Try Hack Me and a um, bunch of other resources, Kali Linux, et cetera, and that's sort of when I heard of it. And then um, that sort of led me naturally to Aberte because I wanted to go to university in the UK and it seemed like Aberte was sort of the best course for ethical hacking and cybersecurity, so... So yeah, and so had you heard about it across the pond? Had you, had you heard about Scotland and what it's doing in cybersecurity? Uh yeah, actually, because um, my fa- some of my family is from Scotland. So when I was looking at universities and looking at the cybersecurity field, I looked at Scotland specifically, and uh, I just found it quite interesting. So yeah, excellent. And Stephen, you're from a bit of a different background to to most that come to to uni. So how did you move from where you are to to studying ethical hacking? Yeah, so I was in the uh, army for six years. Came out. My plans when I came out didn't sort of come to fruition so I went back to education I'd always been fascinated with computers and things and so I went back to college to do uh, computer science and that's where my interest for cyber security sort of developed because I had fantastic lecturers there and they really honed in on interests that you might have and gave additional resources and extra time to sort of hone those skill sets and point you in the right direction. And it it must be to, to the listeners at home quite interesting to hear that you can study something like ethical hacking at university. I know a lot of people kind of raise that eyebrow. So, so Stephen, what is it like actually studying ethical hacking at university? It's very interesting, if I'm honest. Uh, the modules themselves, they give you enough guidance, but sort of encourage exploration and curiosity. That's the sort of elements that they focus on, I personally find. They give you the resources to accomplish an assignment. So the ethical hacking module, you're given a like a network and it's basically... Hack, hack the uh, hack the ne- hack the network and just have fun and just document how you basically break it and yeah. uh, which is a really interesting sort of way of learning as well. I find it's sort of a practical way of learning instead of just here a step by step follow the guide. More encouraging curiosity and exploration. Mm, so very hands on. Yes. Approach. Yeah. And Adam, you you've just come to the end of your your third year, or just about to. So so how would you say, having done some of the very hands on stuff, what is it like studying ethical hack at a university? I'd say it's quite nice because we get a very broad range of subjects. They've especially changed third year this year. Actually, they added malware analysis onto the course and scripting, so we learn a bit more of a hands on from not only just the side of doing the testing and doing evaluations of networks through pen testing and hacking. We also do the side of automating up system to make it quicker, more efficient, why we do this, and malware analysis to help build systems like antiviruses, understand how these systems built, where do we get the evidence from it. I'd say that's mainly third year. We've also got network understanding. So I'd say it's also good because they get us to understand networking to a point of 
We understand how the network works. We understand how traffic goes through. So when it comes to making attack vectors, we understand why that attack vector works. I think um, it's also very good because it makes us kind of think about why we're doing it rather than just doing it and going, this is why the answer It's well, why am I coming to that answer to get us to come to? So kind of trying to, to learn how a real hacker would think yeah. to it in order Thinking to... Thinking outside the box, yeah. which is outside that box, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a good way to put it. Um, so, Heidi, how do you think this differs from studying something like computer science at uni or college? Yeah, so I studied computer science in high school because uh, it was one of the grades that I needed to get into university. And whilst I did like computer science, because you study a bit of everything. So I did, I did a lot of Python, I did a lot of networking, uh, which has greatly helped my first semester at uni because we did a lot of networking there. And we also did web design, so we did a lot of HTML and CSS. And it was good because it gave you a bit, like, I've got skills and all of that, but I think it's too broad. Like, I wasn't going to study at university because I knew I wanted to go into something more specific. So when I saw Ethicoacan, I knew I was going to choose that because it was a more specific field. Whilst computer science is good, especially at, uh, in high school, it's definitely a good subject to take. But when you move on to university, it's good to choose something a bit more specific, just so you don't have too many options, because you've already got so many options in computing, so it's good to try and like narrow it down. Yeah, I mean, and the field of cybersecurity is already so broad, so yeah. um, you've got a lot of options, um, especially doing something like ethical hacking. So let's move on now to talk about your experience working with the Cyber and Fraud Centre. So Stephen, what do you do at the Cyber and Fraud Centre as an ethical hacker? So uh, that, that, that's an open question there. There's quite a lot we do. Uh, so my predominant role currently is running the exercise in a box program from the NTSC. Um, that's a educational tool which allows organizations to take part in a tabletop simulated cyber attack. Uh, and so it's a safe environment where they can get all sort of key stakeholders, different departments involved. And we run through an exercise which usually escalates. So for example, the ransomware one, it will start off with a phishing attack. What measures do they have in place to protect against it? It'll get worse and worse to, and we talk through each step and it's a fantastic educational tool for organizations, but that's what I particularly facilitate with the other ethical hackers on the team. I know obviously we do vulnerability tests and phishing campaigns and a whole range of professional services, which is sort of what you manage uh, on that end. But yeah. And Connor, what about yourself? I know you've done some of the, the vulnerability tests that Stephen just mentioned. So what are they like? Yeah, the vulnerability assessments are really, really interesting. I've done a mix of both internal and external. Essentially, the difference is external. You can sort of do it away from the business, whereas internal, you'll get go to the business itself and test on their network. And I find both of them really, really engaging. Um, external is sort of interesting because you can sort of see how their cybersecurity posture is from the outside. And then internal going to small businesses and charities throughout Scotland is really, really engaging. Getting to speak to the people there, um, sort of sitting down in their offices and um, working with uh, other ethical hackers to sort of find vulnerabilities is very, very rewarding. And of course, it doesn't stop there. We also write reports and that also um, really contributes to sort of your report writing skills and of course, that's sort of the end deliverable. So you want to make sure um, it's uh, very, very comprehensive and that's sort of what the business is going to take away and use to improve their their posture, really. And that sort of feeds into my university work as well. So it's sort of an interconnected type thing. So I really, really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah good to hear. I, I know that a lot of the businesses do get a lot out of seeing the, the reports and, you know, no, no one wants to know uh, that they can be hacked. But I guess if you do know that you can be, then that's the first step to to fixing it so it is, it is good that they find out. Adam you've also done uh, quite a few of the, the tests what kind of common vulnerabilities or weaknesses do you notice when you, you go to businesses? I'd say across every single business that I've been to internal or even just to externals the biggest thing I've seen is just outdated systems yeah. and just not keeping up to date and ensuring patches are put in place. I'd say that's the biggest one especially with SSL certificates those need to be updated yeah. and reissued I've noticed a lot of them, they're not reissued. It will say like two years out of day or a year out of day. And it's like, once they're updated, it solves a lot of the issues which end up being critical later on down the line. They can start as low level, but by the end of it, if you've left them for a few years, they end up becoming critical because it's out of date and it becomes so easy to exploit that essentially a basic little click of a button will take down the whole system for that. Yeah, so the, the longer something's out of date, the, the higher a risk it poses. Yes. Yeah, so you want to get things updated uh, as quick as possible, which I'm sure we've spoken about in other podcasts in this series as well. And so you can see there the advice is is universal. So I'd imagine there's a lot of changing things in the as in the field of uh, cybersecurity. You know, there's always the next new vulnerability. So Heidi, how do you how do you keep up to date with all of this? 
Yeah, so there's a few things, um, or a few websites. Uh, so I think the Hacker News is definitely one that I use because they post like the latest, maybe like breaches or vulnerabilities or anything. It's always good to just keep up to date because it's good to like warn some businesses as well. I also use that there's the NCSC. Sometimes they post some things as well. And honestly, like the main tool is LinkedIn because I follow a lot of, you know, cyber people on LinkedIn and they're always posting about the latest breaches. And so, yeah, I would say LinkedIn's definitely the one that I go to because it's easy to just, just scroll through LinkedIn and then just sort of just click on whatever they've posted and then. I'll be there for like five, ten minutes reading about it. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a big challenge, I think, for a lot of people to keep up to date. There's a lot of noise and, and it's, it's difficult to, to find out what the latest kind of threats are. One of the things that we've been doing in Cyber Scotland, and Stephen, I know you've worked on this in the past, is the is the Cyber Scotland Bulletin and particularly the Technical Bulletin. So, Stephen, what's, what's kind of involved in that? Yeah, so the Technical, well, Cyber Scotland, it's, a, it's basically a brilliant resource where a lot of organisations share their expertise in one location. We're particularly responsible for sort of the uh, the technical blog, which is, as you can imagine, a little bit more technically or orientated uh, in regards to sort of the latest hacks, vulnerabilities, anything that might be going on that could be sort of relevant that that month. Any big news or any sort of large organisations that have been hit by a vulnerability will tell you what the vulnerability is uh, and how sort of you can protect yourself again against it. As uh, it was mentioned earlier, Adam said it's quite often just patching your systems yeah. are keeping them up to date. It's usually outdated systems that cause these issues. Yeah, I think outdated software and, and, and devices is, is a big big issue that we're, we're seeing. What about, um, Heidi, some of the, the other work that we do as ethical hackers? So not the kind of technical side of things, testing the, the websites and the, the networks and things like that. What do we do to businesses and organizations? Things like exercise in a box. What, what are your experiences with that? Uh, I've loved doing the exercise in the boxes, honestly, because obviously I'm still first year, so I'm not able to partake in the testing just yet. I think next year I'll be able to, I'll be doing my testing modules. So I'm excited to get more hands on with the testing with the Cyber Fraud Center. But the exercise in boxes have been really good, whether they're online or in person. I think just being able to teach people because you can see that when we're, if I'm talking about a topic, for example, fishing, um, some of them, they're not too sure. And it's just good to be able to teach them a little bit about it because just a li- even a little bit of advice goes a long way in protecting organizations and businesses. And just like knowing that I've sort of helped someone, especially with um, instance response plans is a big one that some companies sort of miss or they don't do. So I've advised that and they have like noted it down and it just makes me feel good. And it's like, oh, they're going to go do that now. You know, I've helped maybe save them. So, <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine it can be quite rewarding to see some of the work that you're doing whilst you're studying, being taken on board by businesses and organizations yeah, uh, during these sessions. So Connor, a question for you. Obviously, we all have technical backgrounds. How do you think that helps when we do things like exercise in a box? Yeah, so some of us have uh, really technical backgrounds. For example, um, I've been in, into penetration testing for a long time and I um, got my OSCP and sort of having a more technical background sort of allows me to, uh, when running through the exercise in a box, uh, answer some more in-depth questions they have may have because, uh, for example, more mature organizations, they um, sort of send their IT staff along and cybersecurity staff. So when we're running through the exercise in the box, sometimes they'll have a really specific question about something on their network. So being able to answer that is quite rewarding. And also being able to fully sort of understand why something needs to be done. For example, what, when running through like a ransomware exercise in a box, ex- explaining what the risks are and what could happen if they're breached. Um, having a technical background definitely helps with that, I would say. Interesting, interesting to hear. Uh, here's a, a topical question as well, and uh, Adam, I'll come to you for this. Uh, how do we think AI is going to come into the world of ethical hacking, and, and how, how have you experienced it already? Is it is it helping with with things that you're doing? Yeah, I'd say I'd say it's more of an assistance tool than something that's going to replace our jobs. I've seen a couple of worries on tour about it where people are wondering that it's going to replace our jobs. Yeah. I don't think it will. I think it's more of an assistance tool, where if you don't know where to go, and especially for penetration test in a technical sense. Or even in the non-technical sense, trying to explain something to someone, AI can just be there to help with it. So if you don't, if you have a question or you don't understand it, it's good because you can just ask the AI, "Hey, I don't understand this. Can you explain this in more of layman's term for me?" I think it's quite good for that. So I think it's got a place in the industry. I just think currently it's just not set in where it needs to be yet. So it's, it's still a new new tool, but not not replacing anyone yeah. anytime soon. That's good to hear. Holds <laughs> <laughs> Um So. 
what I'm going to ask each of you, uh, I'll, Stephen, I'll come to you first. What is uh, the kind of favourite thing about uh, being an ethical hacker at the Cyber and Fraud Centre? Oh, that's uh, quite a lot. Uh, personally, I, I really enjoy the ability to put practical aspects of what I learn at university into a working environment, into a real world uh, environment. And that's, that's very rewarding to see quite often uh, from a student point of view, you may be d studying a particular aspect in any industry, but having been able to work, apply that in a real world environment at the same time. So say I learned something new at university, we go do an exercise in the box, I can like immediately apply that knowledge and that is very just very re very very rewarding i find uh to apply that um in in real world scenario yeah, yeah. yeah. adam how about you, how about yourself so i per personally i like learning about the atmosphere that we've got it's helpful for when i go into industry without the industry experience i probably think that a lot of the work that we do it'd be okay to tell them like work this many hours work this much cyber and fraud center it's nice because i've learned what a really nice culture is i've learned essentially what a nice team works like building off the point Stephen made of putting our knowledge that we've learned in class into practical is really nice because it solidifies what I know and confirms yeah I know what I'm doing and it also helps clarify wondering why am I doing this but seeing the real world aspect of that's why I'm doing it I think that's given me the biggest benefit to my course yeah excellent excellent Hey, did you have a favourite moment as, as in your time as an ethical hacker with us oh my goodness I think all of the moments like there's just been there's been so many opportunities like if you told me one year ago today, I'd be sat here doing a podcast for the Cyber Fraud Center. Like I think I would have just laughed in your face. Like I was just so grateful for the opportunity. Definitely, um, I'm glad that I chose the Ethical Hacking um, course at Aberty because if I didn't, I don't, I wouldn't be here because I know only Ethical Hackers are employed here. But yeah, I've been, I've enjoyed um, every bit of it. I'm looking forward to what's coming because I know there's a few events coming up that I'm going to be a part of. So. I'm very excited. Lots to look forward to. Yeah. Yes. Connor, how about yourself? Favourite moments? Um, I would say um, my f my favourite part of being an ethical hacker is sort of interacting with small and medium businesses and the people within them because I sort of come from a bit of a, a sort of sales and customer support background and sort of being able to mix that with the technical aspect is really, really rewarding because, you know, while you're on your course, you're doing a lot of technical stuff, but being able to talk to people about the technical stuff and put it into real world terms and sort of seeing them understand what you're talking about is really, really rewarding because, you know, some people aren't as technical as we are. So um, seeing them just where their faces light up when they understand something is really, really rewarding. And also but sort of that sort of feeds into what I want to do later in my career, because um, I would say just doing technical stuff is some people are definitely happy with that. But I would say um, sort of maintaining sort of a person to person connection is something I really, really value. And I think the being an ethical hacker here has definitely allowed that so yeah i think a lot of people think about ethical hacking as a very technical thing but yeah we find that it's the people that i think are the most important and especially these days hackers know that people are the ones to target so yeah. keeping that person to person work is is really valuable exactly so finally last question and stephen i'll come to you for this to anyone listening that is thinking whether they be uh, just coming out of school, whether they be looking for a career change, what what would you say to to someone that is perhaps thinking about pursuing a career in cybersecurity? Um, what would I say to them? What would you say? I'd ab absolutely encourage it because it's it's a very interesting topic. Um, particularly, obviously, we're on the more off offensive side of the cybersecurity uh, world. If you've got a curiosity for sort of breaking things, taking things apart, certainly explore that curiosity and go for it regards to sort of what you should do i'd definitely say having a fundamentals of computer science like what heidi was mentioning before is definitely helpful because uh, that can sort of teach you the fundamentals on how things work and then you can take things apart in in regards to sort of systems networks and creating tools to break them but yeah definitely do it it's it's fun it's interesting you can definitely go down rabbit holes i could probably speak for everybody on that way you find a vulnerability and you just can spend a, a considerable amount of time exploring that vulnerability and it's just interesting that's one of the big things so yeah definitely go for it i'm going to sneak one last question in here heidi what would you say to any young girls that you think are listening that perhaps think that cyber security isn't for them i think if you are interested in it i think you should go for it because when i started high school i didn't know what i wanted to do but then as i grew up and I, like i said i got to fifth and sixth year i just started thinking of computing i was like oh my goodness, like, why did I not think of this before? Because yeah. computing was not my first choice. I don't think anyone thinks of one thing and sticks with it all throughout high school and that. But yeah, 
computer I think you should definitely go for it definitely explore it anyways I don't you can't say oh I don't think I'll like that if you've not tried it so definitely definitely go for it <laughs> so let's just go for it uh, so thank you very much guys for uh, taking the time today I uh, hope that you've uh, you've enjoyed being on the Cyber Scotland podcast uh, for those that are listening uh, we have a bunch of other podcasts to to check out so please do check them out on the Cyber Scotland website along with any other cyber security advice uh, for any queries that you have. But that's it from us today. So thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to our chat with our ethical hacking team. For more information on Cyber Scotland, visit cyberscotland.com.